Shalom. All praise goes to Yahweh, Bah Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Quidash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. We are walking amongst the living dead. We being those that have received that quickening spirit. Now, the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14 tells us the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. And we have a spirit that is sustaining us within these infirmities that we have within these bodies that we're living in, in these everlasting chains of darkness, as the scripture speaks of. Two-thirds of our people, number one, Esau, Edom, and the rest of the heathen nations have a wounded spirit. And that's why we can't bear them, meaning we can't mend with them. Now, it is the spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profiteth nothing. That comes from the book of St. John, chapter 6, and verse 63. And it reads, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we being amongst the believers have received real life, not the physical life, but the spiritual life that the spirit giveth. Now, the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 tells us, and you have he quickeneth. And that you is a small number that's upon the planet right now, which are the believers. We have been called out of gross darkness. And now we stand upon our feet, meaning now we are spiritually alive. And that spirit comes by Yahweh Shai. It says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And we know sin is transgressing the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Now, only a small number is going to be acquitted from breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. That's why two-thirds of our people are spiritually dead. That's why we walk amongst the living dead. But we have a quickening spirit. The word quickening or quickened means to be made alive or to be or to exist. Now we have a chance to exist in the sight of the Most High through that quickening spirit, which is the spirit of Yahweh Shai which is the spirit of prophecy. And that spirit has made us alive. Now, when you read the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, and verse 6, it tells us, The Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, killeth and maketh alive. All right, we was once spiritually dead. Now we have been made alive. The scripture says he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Now we have been brought up out of the dust. Okay, that's why the scripture tells us the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, maketh poor and maketh rich. We was once poor spiritually, meaning we didn't understand the ways of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and what was needed of us in these times. But now we have been made rich, not kernelly rich, but spiritually rich which is real riches. It says, he bringeth low and lifteth up. Once we broke the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, we was brought low. But those that have been chosen, all right, Lord willing, we are part of that number. We will receive what? That quickening spirit that brings us up, all right, that rises us up out of that state of confusion. Verse 8. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and we are that poor that has been raised up out of that dust, which is a state of confusion. The scripture says, and lift up, up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai's, and he have set the world upon them and pillars are placed upon the foundation. Yahweh Shai would be that foundation. Lord willing, if we endure unto the end, we being amongst the believers, we shall be what? Those pillars, all right? Which is the elect, 
which is the governed body of the nation of Israel. And the world is going to be placed upon our shoulders, meaning we are going to rule. The governed body is going to be upon the foundation, which is the shoulders of Yahweh Shai. And the world is going to be upon our shoulders, meaning we are going to be righteous rulers, all right, if we continue to stand upon that foundation, which is Yahweh Shai. And that's due to that quickening spirit that has brought us up out of that state of confusion. Now we know the names of our powers. Now we know the job at hand or the task at hand, which is to prophesy against Mount Seir. And all of that comes by that quickening spirit. That's why the scripture says the flesh profit nothing. All right. Now, the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, is a great example of, of us coming up out of that dust or that confused state or coming up out of that spiritually dead state because at once upon a time we as believers we were spiritually dehydrated meaning we didn't have these living waters now the book of ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1 tells us the hand of the lord yahweh by hashem yahweh Shah, was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the lord Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And this is the vision that was given unto Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was carried or propelled into a future state. And he seen America. And he seen us in that spiritual dehydrated state here in America. Ezekiel 37 and 1 again. The hand of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, was upon me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst, midst meaning in the middle or amongst of the valley. And that valley would be America because America is a spiritually low land that's surrounded by mountain regions that makes up a valley. It says, which was full of bones and bones represents a dead state, which we all were in that dead state at once upon a time before the spirit quickeneth us. Verse two, it says, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry, meaning they were spiritually dehydrated. They lacked the living waters. Verse 3, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, power thou knoweth. So Ezekiel gave the Lord a great answer. He said, O Lord, thou knowest, because you are power that know all things. Verse 4, again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's how we have been quickening it. All right? We have heard the words that the Most High said, and the Most High allowed men to, to speak these words unto us, and now we have been set upon our feet to speak words unto the believers, all right, which are those dry bones. And if they hear these words, which are these living waters, they will become quickened, or they will be made alive. They will come up out of that spiritually dehydrated state. Verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord power unto these bones, Behold, behold means see or look, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And that's how we are living. Even on a physical level, a physical body can't be animated or it can't be quickened without the breath. That's the same in the spiritual aspect. We have received that breath, which is that inspiration from the Most High through Yahweh Shai. Now we stand upon our feet as spiritually living souls. Verse six, it says, and I will lay some news upon you and will bring up flesh upon you. And that represents your identity and cover you with skin. All right. And that's a lot of guys out here that wear fringes every day. They have the skin. All right. They have the flesh. They have the sinews, but they don't have the breath. It says, and put breath in you and ye shall live. So that's how you're going to be animated. That's how you're going to be quickened through the breath, all right? It says, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Verse seven, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and we are in the same stead as Ezekiel. 
we're prophesying as we was commanded by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. It says, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shakening, and the bones came together bone to his bone. And that began with the forerunner of Yahweh Shai, all right, which is high priest Rabbi of Abivans, okay? Now the body of Yahweh Shai is coming together. Verse 8, it says, and when I behold, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And a prime example of that is these other Israelite camps. They push the law, the law, the law. They also let you know that you're Israelites, but they don't have the breath. And that breath allows you to what? Blow the trumpet because you can't blow the warning trumpet without the breath. Okay. But here at Great Millstone, starting with the apostles and elders, that breath is being uh, put forth, which is what? That trumpet is sounding off, which is a warning trumpet. Verse 9, it says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, say to the breath, Thus saith the Lord power, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And we are in that process right now. All right. This prophecy is playing out right now. Now we are alive. All right. Lord willing, if we endure unto the end and that breath continue to dwell in us, we're going to what? Achieve the goal, which is everlasting life. And that comes by continuing to endure. The book of St. John, chapter, chapter 5. And verse 24 tells us, Verily, verily, and verily means truly, truly. So this is a true saying. I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life. So if we continue to believe, we're going to have what? Everlasting life. And shall not come unto condemnation, which is a damnatory sentence. And that's going to be by the way of fire but it's passed from death unto life. Now we have passed from death unto life because to be conformed to a dead man's system is death, which is Esau. But now we have passed from death unto life, which is receiving the spirit of prophecy, which is the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is come, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of the Most High. And they that hear shall live, all right? And we are a part of that number. Now we are alive because we have heard the voice of the, the chief shepherd. Verse 26, it says, For as the father have life in himself, so have he given the son to have life in himself. Verse 27, And have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Verse 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. It says, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And spiritually, we was in our graves. We was in that dust, all right? You bury your body in dust or in dirt, but we have came up out of that confused state. We have came up out of those graves spiritually by hearing the voice. Okay, verse 29, it says, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And we want to be a part of that number that have done good. And what is that good? We believed in Yahweh Shai. We worked the works of the Most High in our past life, such as when Yahweh Shai walked the earth 2,000 and some odd years ago. Now we have came back. In the reincarnation, we have woken up with the awe, okay? Which meaning we have woken up unto life. Those everlasting waters are flowing out of us. That breath of life is being blown out of us. And that gives us the capability to teach and to prophesy. All right, now back to the book of Ezekiel 37. In verse 8 again, it says, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews in the flesh came up upon them, 
and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord power, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe unto these slain, that they may live. All right, now we are standing upon our feet. All right, verse 10, it tells us, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And that's what you see taking place, starting here at Great Millstone. All right, that army is being placed in their lot. All right, that's why the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8 tells us, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America, which spiritually, not physically, but spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt and also on a physical level because we see all of the elements of these ancient Places such as Sodom and Egypt being played out on a spiritual level and a physical level here in America. America is that spiritual melting pot. All of the deeds of these ancient kingdoms falls here in America. It says, where also our Lord Yahweh Shai was crucified. And that start with a thing called iconoclasm, which is the destruction of the icons, such as uh, the picture or the image of Caesar or Cesare Bozier, which really goes back to Zerapis Crispus. All right, let's jump down to verse 11. It says, And after three days, and and half the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. And you're seeing that take place. This prophecy is taking place right now, starting here at Great Millstone. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And that goes back to who? The wicked elites. Because they put time, effort, and money into keeping us spiritually dehydrated. But the spirit, all right, has quickened us regardless of the deeds that the devil have done. Now they're in great fear. Now that they know that the time is at hand because we are set up as tokens to let you know the time and the seasons. And once we woke up out of a, that dust, Esau Edom knows that their end is at hand. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and verse 1, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness, and that's us, coming up out of that dehydrated state, before the face of such as have afflicted them, which is the wicked elites, and made no account of his labor. Verse 2, When they see it, they shall be troubled with great fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And that's going into what? Us being beamed up upon those chariots, all right? That's going to be us entering into everlasting life. Matter of fact, the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, And verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High. And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first, which are those that have already died for the names Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Then we which are alive and remain, all right, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, all right? And that's us having that strangeness of, of the salvation that the scripture speaks about. The wicked elites are going to see this, all right? Verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words, and these are words of comfort, all right, that we have been made alive due to the breath entering into us. Now these living waters, all right, are functioning within these bodies that was once dead, and that's a modern marvel. All right, beyond all of the modern marvels that Esau Edom can erect, this is the number one modern marvel, all right? Because those that didn't know their powers, those that didn't know their identity, now they are alive, meaning they have came up out of that dead, confused state. Now they're standing upon their feet and telling Esau Edom that their system is at an end, and we are the next rulers, all right? That's a modern marvel. 
And that's due to that breath, all right? That's due to that quickening spirit, all right? That's sustaining us here in this wicked place and here in these uh, chains of darkness. So, you know, Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA, Wa Ababa Ball. Soon.